So disclaimer, don't watch the story before bedtime because you will have nightmares. <laughs> so before I get into the story, I just want to say that nothing is made up, I promise. I feel like a lot of people do paranormal story time because, well, a lot of paranormal things happen in this world, so why not tell a story? Especially if you're dealing with like a haunted house where people have died in that house or there's evil presences. In this story, it is about a house that we lived in when I was 12, I believe. My mom rented this house off of Highway 273 in Anderson, California, this little blue house. And so I grew up kind of poor. We weren't very rich at all. Um, so my mom got a deal with this house because this guy shot himself in the head in the living room. And so the rent was supposed to be like 550 or 650, I believe. And so my mom got a really good deal on rent for this home that this guy shot himself in the head, killed himself in. Okay, so we are very like superstitious people, me and my family. We do believe in like um, spirits or ent entities, angels, demons, all of that, you know. And so I was kind of expecting that things could start happening in this house. My mom was probably expecting it too. So I don't want to say that just because we're expecting it, that's why these things happen or that maybe we're just, you know, it's just our imagination or whatnot. Like real, actual, scary, paranormal things were happening in this house. It wasn't just our imagination. Like once I get into the story, you won't believe it. So what started happening was the things that like happen in a scary movie about a haunted house, like you start hearing noises or like voices in the other rooms. That's what was happening in this house. We would hear tapping on the wall and it would be coming from like my room. Well, me and my sister shared a room first and then she moved into the other room. And then my mom like slept in the living room. She had her bed in the living room. But um, so we would hear tapping on the walls and that's just like the beginning of what would happen. And then it gets scarier. One of the bigger scary things that happened first, what it happened to my mom. Um, she was outside in the garage. It's a pretty small house. You go down the hallway and there's a room to the left and there's a room to the right. But the room to the left has a door that leads to the backyard and to the garage. So like five feet away, there's the garage door. Not like the garage door where you park the cars or pull the cars in. It's like the garage door where you walk through. My mom was in the garage and she had the doors open, both doors to the garage and to the house because she was like moving in stuff in from the garage because we were just moving in still. Like it was like two weeks after we had moved in. I just remember her like running into the house and she was pale, like pale white. She looked like she had seen a ghost. <laughs> She's like, I'm not gonna be out there anymore. She was out there outside. It was after dark. It was about like eight o'clock in, you know, in the middle of fall. So it was pretty dark outside. And she's like, I'm not going to be out there anymore. It's too dark. It's scary out there. She's like, I swear I just heard somebody call my name. She's like, I just heard a man call my name. She's like, like this. Lana. She said she turned around. She's like, what? And she didn't hear anything after that. And she just came running in the house, like scared as shit. <laughs> that was the first thing that happened to her was she just heard a man literally just say, Lana. Because her name was Lana. Okay, that's not that scary, but... It gets scarier. The second paranormal thing that happened was to my sister. My sister was thinking that maybe like this guy is still wandering around the house, his spirit or something. We all believe that. We're like, oh crap, okay, is this guy gonna haunt us because his spirit is still lingering around the house? And so my sister said that she was laying in her bed one day and she said she just got like this weird feeling that somebody was watching her. And that usually happens like with paranormal activity people will say that they get the feeling that somebody's watching them and that's usually true because you know when there's paranormal entities around they do watch you popping my fingers so she said that she was just like so scared to move she, she was just laying there and she said that she told the guy that if he was there to do something she's like think she said she was thinking in her head and she's like if you're here right now do something let me know that you're here and then she said out of nowhere, she felt somebody brush their fingers across her ankle because her foot was like, she was laying on her stomach and her feet were like 
just exposed, you know, she wasn't covered up by a blanket or anything, and she said that she felt this guy touch her ankle, or somebody just touch her ankle. That gave me chills when she told me that story. I was like, oh my god, now this guy's touching people? Like, first he calls my mom's name, now he's touching my sister. I'm next. No, really, I was next. Like I said, it was the middle of fall, and at one point, maybe like a week later or so, it started raining. <laughs> what a scene, like, okay, this is a scene straight from a scary movie, right? Pouring rain outside, thunder, the whole nine, okay, storming. I was laying on my mom's bed in the living room, and my mom wasn't home this night. She was at her, well, my stepdad's house, because they had actually, it's a long story, they had broken up, my mom moved out, took us with her, and she got back with my stepdad, but she was spending the night at his house at this time, and... I was home alone with my sister. She was sleeping in her bed. I think my grandma was there actually that night. I think we were sleeping in the same bed, me and my grandma. But um, I remember, clear as day, because I still get chills when I think about this, I could hear somebody, it sounded like they were wearing cowboy boots, but I could hear somebody walking on the roof. Ooh, I'm home alone right now and I'm getting chills. Sorry. Okay, so I hear somebody walking on the roof and they were walking like slow, like slow and scary. Like it's as if the person on the top of the roof was trying to scare me or entity or whatever it was, whoever was walking, they were trying to sound as scary as they could because it sounded scary. It was like, like just straight out of a horror film. Like I hear this walking from the kitchen. It's not a very big house. So maybe like 15 feet that way. And they're slowly walking towards me on the top of the roof. I kid you not, I'm not making this up. I promise. I swear to God, I put it on my kids. I'm not making this up. These cowboy boots, whatever the hell they were, whatever he was wearing, sounded like cowboy boots, were walking towards me as slow as they could. And he stops right on top of me, right above me. And as soon as they stop walking right over me. It thunders outside and I could see the thunder coming in, like the light coming in through the house and it was just like, a, oh my god, just a horror film at that very moment. I got up, I woke my sister up, I was like, I need to sleep in your bed. I know my grandma wouldn't believe that kind of stuff if I told her, so I think, yeah, my grandma was sleeping in the bed. I needed to get out of the bed and go sleep in my sister's bed because I know my sister would believe me if I told her. I told her I just heard somebody walking on the roof. She acted like she didn't believe me, but she was like, it's all right, just, you know, lay down, go to sleep. I swear that was one of the scariest paranormal things that's ever happened to me. I don't know if I have this connection to the spirit world or what, but I've also been a little bit psychic throughout my life. And I do have, I feel like I have this connection with the spirit world. And I've always been able to see, like, entities. I've seen, you know, good entities, bad entities. And I label them good, good or bad because they say that good entities are usually like a white shadow figure or it could be like a dead, you know, a dead spirit, like a person that was there before. They're usually not evil, but they're still like disturbed. So it's still scary, but they'll be like a white shadowy figure, not shadowy figure. Shadow figures are supposed to be evil. And I've seen those as well. I've seen figures that are dark, you know, shadow or black figures that are scary as hell and they give you like a bad vibe when they're around so yeah even like seeing figures with my own eyes this experience with the walking over my head that was like the scariest thing I've ever felt because this guy whoever he was he was probably very disturbed before he had killed himself obviously because you know nobody kills himself when they're happy and living their best life they're obviously miserable and disturbed, and so I think that he was still there, and he wanted to. He wanted us to know that he was there. He wanted his presence to be felt or heard, in my case. One of the scariest houses I've ever lived in. That's not where it ended. Like, we still would hear, you know, tapping on the wall or, you know, man talking in the other rooms. When we're in one room, we'd hear him talking in the other room. We moved out soon after that. We didn't stay there for very long, actually. I think we did move out just because of that specifically. My mom, you know, it wasn't like crazy bad shit happening to us, but it was just still too much 
like paranormal stuff going on for us to stay there. And I think that was just like my mom's excuse so that we could move back in with my stepdad because they've been together my whole life. She was with him since I was, since she was pregnant with me. So it was only a matter of time before we, you know, moved back in with my stepdad. But yeah, those, that like half a year that we stayed there, I think like maybe almost five months we stayed there. That was it. You know, that's basically it. Now that I think about it, it's not that scary. <laughs> yeah, so that's one of my paranormal activity things that have happened to me in my life in the house that, the little blue house on Highway 273. <laughs> that's my paranormal story time. So if you like this story, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe for more story time or hit that notifications bell in the corner. Thanks for watching.